A technician confirms that the tracks and pads are correctly located. A conveyor then takes one of the panels into a machine that precisely positions a metal mesh stencil over it. An automated squeegee spreads solder paste onto the circuit boards through the open areas of the stencil. The solder paste will act as glue for over 100 tiny electrical components. Next, the circuit boards receive those electrical components. The parts include microprocessors, sensors, and memory chips. Then the circuit boards head into an oven with several different heating and cooling zones. As they travel through these zones, the soldering particles melt to bond the components to the circuit boards. Here, a technician positions them under probes. The probes descend and load software into the microprocessors. This brings them to life and enables them to control all of the board's functions. Another technician trims and cuts the panels using circular saws. She then punches out the four round circuit boards and transfers them to a tray that has an electrically conductive surface. The technician places a buzzer mechanism behind a backlight. She transfers the two of them to the reverse side of a display screen. She places a plastic framework on top and she inserts rubber connectors in it. The next assembler inserts the circuit board into the digital display unit. In the next stage of production, the worker removes any dust particles from the screen using blasts of compressed air. She snaps the dive computer module into a tough plastic case that's designed to withstand a lot of water pressure. She cleans a glass faceplate and places it over the digital screen. This faceplate will protect the screen from water. The next part is a metal bezel. It surrounds the faceplate and will be used to secure it to the casing. She flips the assembly around and screws the bezel to the case from the back. She inserts the computer battery into a titanium backplate. She then installs the battery assembly in the back of the module and secures it with screws.